everybody happy 12th of december vlogmas lovely to see you again um got two parcels today one was a box a box a box of revolution products um because i haven't been able i usually go do my uh buy my stuff from boots the chemist and because i've got this the other week i showed you that i bought some revolution eye shadows i thought they sent me a thing saying i could get a discount a little they sent me an email saying i would get a discount so i thought oh I'll, I'll get some stuff from them so i've got some makeup remover stuff and i'll show you what i've bought in the next bit of this vlog <laughs> Free gift not that I'm going to use it but I'll probably pass it on to my granddaughter who has started to wear makeup and it's eyeshadow rather bright colors pinks browns beige ready gold sparkly so they will go to my granddaughter This one is reusable makeup pads. We could easily make them, couldn't we ladies? Velvet on one side. I got these so I could see what to do with them. Velvet on one side and like a cotton jersey on the other side. Cut them into circles, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I thought I'll buy seven to start with, makeup remover pads, and then I'll make seven, and so that these, while these are getting washed, the other seven can be used. So that's seven makeup remover pads. And it comes in a nice little bag. And this, is, does this come off? The popper I'm not sure why but it's the popper so it can hang on to something so that's a nice little purchase then this one I've forgotten what this is now microfiber face cloths why did I buy that I don't recall buying these maybe it's their free gift it's not ringing any bells So let's get rid of this little thing that stops the zip from opening. And inside face cloths. No, I definitely didn't order those, so they may have been a free gift. But um, not bad, quite soft catches your skin catches if you've got dry skin it feels like it's catching it so revolution skincare london and they are face cloths and what does it say about them just microfiber face cloths for best results hand wash and allow to dry three and then the next one was cleansing gel Removes makeup, oil and dirt. So I figured I would try that. It's just a see-through. And obviously it takes your makeup off. Gel cleanser. So I'll, t I'll tell you sometime what that's like. Then the next one is Gentle Eye Makeup Remover with Peach Kernel Oil. That's rather nice, that's soft, really soft. So that's going to be quite good to get rid of, get off the makeup. 
and then the last one is retinol serum now I watched a pro uh, uh, a vlog by a dermatologist who said that if you want to stop your skin aging which I'm probably too late for uh, you use retinol and um, you should use anything with retinol in so I thought I would try this and how do I get this out A drop of Revolution Skin Care Retinol Serum. And it says, after cleansing, apply in the evening for best results. And it, that's all it says. So, um, don't use unbroken or irrit irritated skin. Avoid contact with the eyes. But basically, just does it say anything here? Oh golly, that! look at how tiny that writing is. Let's see if I can read it. Uh, yeah, it just says serum. It's all in different languages there. And I can't... English. Caution warning not to be used by pregnant women. Avoid direct contact with eyes and contact... If contact occurs, rinse thoroughly with water. Do not use unbroken or, well, that basically says the same thing that's on there. So I would imagine some drops. You just put a few drops on your, on your skin. I'll put one drop on there and then rub it in. Oh, it spreads nicely. And maybe it pulls it in and gets rid of this gets rid of the uh, the wrinkles you never know <laughs> anyway that is my purchases for for uh, from revolution one two three that was definitely ordered I don't recall ordering that and I know that that was a free gift so those are all the things that I've that I've got from Revolution does it say free gift no it doesn't say it's got them all down as it just lists all the things that I bought not with prices on though so um, yeah that's my Revolution box the second thing I got was I saw this on someone's uh, vlogmas from last year and I thought I, th I thought they were lovely and the intention was to have them on a Christmas table on the table when you've got the Christmas setting you know the Christmas dinner plates and everything but we haven't got one have we that's not going to happen <laughs> but I still decided I would get some and they are three candle holders with spinners on them and I'll put a little picture up of them on my fireside, on my fireplace. I've got them burning and going around and they're lovely, they're really nice. They weren't very expensive. I'll put the price, I'll put the link down below. I got them from Amazon. I'll put the link down below for where what they were, where they where they are. And you can if you fancy getting them, you can get them. You still got 10 days is it no two weeks two weeks yesterday till christmas so you've got time to get some if you wanted some <laughs> andrea ryan this is just a couple of questions couple of things that people have sent me messages with andrea ryan said i found a program on bbc iplayer today called make craft britain the first one was filmed at Banbury Castle and wondered if you'd seen it. No, I haven't seen it and I don't know if any of you lot out there have seen it. But we'd better check our iPlayer and look for Make Craft Britain. Banbury Castle is up in Northumberland, where I, the county that I was originally brought up in. And it's a beautiful castle. So if, even if, it, if you, you know, you get it, if, I'm not sure what it shows you of the castle, but it's a lovely castle to see. So check out Make Craft Britain on BBC iPlayer. Thank you, Angela. I liked Karen Laws's comment. She said, hubby loves the mystery story. He says it's a great idea because he loves being read to. <laughs> You're too lazy to read books, you. 
<laughs> and um, someone asked me, someone I noticed that I wear this nomination bracelet. I'll take it off. I've always liked stay it's a stainless steel bracelet. And I've always liked stainless steel bracelets. I prefer stainless steel to silver. I prefer, I used, when I was younger, my father used to sell this kind of watch strap in his jeweler shop. When people brought a, a watch in and they got it changed and got a new bracelet put on, we used to have a watch bracelet drawer where you threw the, you know, would say to them, do you want your bracelet back? And they'd say no, and we'd just go and put it in a drawer. Well, I used to sometimes potter on and make a bracelet like this out of these kind of links. And this is, it's Italian, this one, and it's called a nomination bracelet. And basically, I don't know if you can see there, not very clear to see. The links stretch out like that. And by stretching out, you can actually add new links to it. So I I saw this. I saw it a, a, a few years back when I used to sell jewellery. I used to go to the jewellery, the um, a big jewellery fair in Birmingham. Uh, the International Jeweller Jewellery Fair or International something, gift fair. All the people who saw, all the traders would sell their wares there and you would go around and look at all the, all the stalls and decide what you wanted to sell in your shop and I caught my eye on this nomination jewellery bracelet and I thought oh that's just like the one I used to wear when I was a kid when I was about a teenager so I invested in one of these uh, only last year I think well, well a couple of years ago and you what you do is you add little links to it and I've just added a little pink link there and a little red link there. So this one, uh, you can. what you do is you buy new little links and you take the, the plain ones off and fill it up with different ones. I basically at this point in time only have three. A red one there, a red one, a pink one. And the one in the middle is like a heart and it stands out. Now that was the first one I got with a bracelet. It was actually, I got it actually from the nomination site and it was in the sale. I just like it. What you can do is you can buy, you can get a link, a bit like the charm bracelets that they're doing at the moment. I can't remember what they're called. I'll put the name up there where you add a charm for certain things, for a new baby, for a new house and so on. And these ones, you can get little, little links that have a house on, that have a baby on, that have different things on and you can take the plain ones off and replace it with new ones and as time goes on you may end up with more and more bracelets i just have the one i'm quite happy with the one but um i'll show you up there some some pictures of the one people who have well and ad where they advertise that you can have quite a lot of bracelets so that's the what i have on my nomination i like my nomination you can bash but with it being stainless steel you can hit it you can bang it you can do whatever you like with it it's not going to damage whereas silver tends to get worn and dented nomination the only thing that might go in this are the springs inside and uh but other than that the, the it's really really hard wearing so that's what i wear right let's get on to the most important stuff the those advent calendars so hemline number 12 number 12 and number 12 is Ooh, if I can get it out number 12 there right are you ready for the fun oh I can't get it that way right I've got you twisted hang on so this is number 12 Ooh. I shouldn't have shaken it because that's given me an idea of what it might be how Howl's, uh, Howl's Blood Pins. Howl's Blood Pins. Household Pins. <laughs> well, I can't go wrong with those. I like, they're the ones, just total plain pins in there. I've already got a batch of them on here. Look at that, on my magnetic pin holder. Great thing, that. And I think these, I think these, I think those ones are from last year's one and so I've got more to add I usually prefer the ones with little things on the end but I ran short somewhere or I'd left some in the in the house and I wanted to do do some pinning and I found these from last year 
and they're quite handy they're a bit awkward to hold as you get older when you find it harder to hold them when you're with your hands but ooh, got a spare box another one there so that's what's in the that's what's in the hemline one now then the next one is loxitan now the, the other day i said to you that i didn't think there was much in there but then i realized that that's the one that I got in the thing and that's the one that I already had and I've been using it in here and so I've almost used it up. This is the one that I got in a, um, a sample or something last year and I keep quite a lot of them dotted all over the place to, to put on my hands when they're dry. So that was my, my own and that was the freebie. Well, that wasn't a freebie but that was in the calendar. So, L'Occitane. And number 12 is, where's number 12? 21, 15, 2, 10, 20, 23. Ah, there's number 12 up there. Right. I shall tilt you down so you can see. Number 12 is that one. It's probably going to be another tube. <laughs> do you think L'Occitane makes a lot of tubes and stuff? I'm sure they do. Oh, I can't get it out. It's stuck. It is a tube of, it's a tube of hand cream and this is almond, with almond in, almond hand cream, sweat matte hand care and I'll put it on there because I put some cream on the other one and what does that smell like? Mm, is that? Doesn't remind me of almonds. Nice perfume, but doesn't remind me of almonds. Or maybe it is, but it's just not the kind of almonds that I'm used to. <laughs> so that's almond hand cream. We're going to do what we're going to do. We're going to do Sherlock. Sherlock that you all enjoy. Mind you, a few of you said that that last one. It was a bit weird. I have to agree. The uh, not the the one about the um, not the abominable snowman one. The um, oh where was it? The rum deal on the pier. That one where it was lots of lists. That was a bit of a weird one. So let's hope that the next one isn't so bad. It's called with God's help, and there's a little picture of an angel there. Can you see it? little angel well she's not an angel she looks like she's holding a lipstick oh no she's <laughs> she's holding a knife it's a knife anyway a knife with blood on it with God's help the old woman lay on her back on the polished oak floor in her living room her ash grey face still mirrored the final horror she must have experienced at the final moment of her death the massive handle of a bowie knife was protruding from her chest. Above her, on a shabby-looking shelf, a wooden statue, which Holmes recognised to be Saint Rosilia of Sicily, was standing beside a crucifix and rosary beads, staring down at the murder victim with lowered limewood eyes. She was Sicilian, you see, Mr Holmes, Miss Winters said. Though she'd been living in England for more than 30 years. Could it be something to do with the Mafia? She was very religious. Sometimes I would hear her saying her prayers. Always in Italian mind, never in English. At half past five or thereabouts, I heard a terrible scream coming from her flat. I immediately ran out into the hall, found her front door open, and inside the flat, the Reverend was standing in front of her dead body. I shouted for help. A few moments later, several more neighbours arrived. But it was too late. Isn't that so, Reverend? Peace be with her, poor woman. She was a member of my parish here in the West End. She approached me at the last mass and asked me to come and visit her today. She told me she wanted to donate a set of large antique nativity figures from Sicily to our church for Christmas. 
Apparently they were a family heirloom worth a significant amount of money. So I came here today as agreed, but there is no sign of any figures here. Someone must have overheard our conversation and stolen them all. The poor woman is the victim of an armed robbery. I was standing in front of her front door when I heard her horrible death cry and stormed into her flat to find her lying there. The back door to the garden was open and the murderer had already fled. Religious art is often extremely valuable. When I was still serving the Venerable Archbishop of Canterbury, there was a similar case one time. It all happened very quickly then too, and the murderers vanished out a rear entrance in just the same manner. The prior of the bishop's palace was discovered dead and three valuable monstrances were missing. Who could do such a terrible thing? You'll find out after I've done the map of England. See you in a minute with that. Now then, map of England. Here we are, the map of England. I was asked by, who was it asked me this question? Kathy Kellerman asked me, sent a message and said, where is the Isle of Wight? Now I know some of you watch um, Kittenish Behaviour, Sean from Kittenish Behaviour, and she is on the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight is one of the, one of the only regions that's in tier one that hasn't got too high a COVID and the Isle of Wight is that little island there just where the squirrel's on. It, I think it's the only island that has red squirrels on. We have a lot of squirrels. Uh, I think this, there were some red squirrels down here but it's being taken over by grey squirrels and so they are the only ones that have got red squirrels I believe. I might be wrong but let me find out. Well, the answer about the red squirrels is Scotland and Ireland are where the red squirrels now has its main strongholds. In England, red squirrels only survive on the Isle of Wight and Brown Sea Island where there are no greys on, Form on the Formby coast and in the extensive pine forest of Northumberland and the Lake District. So they're found in the county where I was brought up, which is on the borders of Scotland. They're found on... Isle of Wight and on Brown Sea Island and the, some parts of the Lake District but they're rapidly being taken over by grey squirrels. I know where we worked we had a lot of squirrels outside our workplace because our workplace backed onto a, a park and there was always squirrels going around the trees but they were always grey ones. So the Isle of Wight is down there and it's one of the only places where there are red squirrels in England. There's red, red squirrels in Ireland and in Scotland, in Ireland and Scotland, and Northumberland, which is up there, and the Lake District, which is there, and down here. The rest, I think, now some of you might say I've got red squirrels in my garden, so I'm only reading what it said on the, on the, um, from the Wikipedia. So you may prove us wrong, so if you've got red squirrels in your area, do let me know. But, uh, yes, and that's the Isle of Wight there. So you have to go across it on a little ferry. I think it takes about half an hour to get across. Uh, my daughter just lives where that pine tree is there. So it's not far from the Isle of Wight. And London is about where, the, where that comes in there, around about where number 24 is. Might be right, might be right. Anyway, number 12 is right up here right up there and number 12 oh number 12 is where is he now you'll all recognize him number 12 is a can you see it number 12 is a scottish piper and there he is scotland is renowned for the scottish pipers and the other thing we all want to know is what are they wear under their kilts <laughs> Some people say they don't wear anything, but uh, they have the sporran to cover the little fur bag at the front covers covers the, the naughty bits. <laughs> so number 12 goes up, actually the whole of Scotland you'll find lots of Scotsmen, but this man is going to be put right at the top near the near near Aberdeen. Aberdeen's across there. Aberdeen's across there. So this little man's going to be here and let's tell you what it says about that. The Scottish Piper. The original purpose of the 
<laughs> the original purpose of the pipes in battle was to signal tactical movements to the troops in the same way as a bugle was used in cavalry to relay orders from officers to soldiers during battle. People today are more familiar with the sound of bagpipes to see in the New Year. Yes, on uh, New Year's Eve, Hogmanay, you, you oldies like me will remember that on a midnight on New Year's Eve in England on BBC, can you remember who used to have his Hogmanay night? Oh, my battery's going. I'm going to have to change it again. Hang on. Battery's back. Right, I was saying, you, you, you oldies... The oldies in England might remember watching BBC at midnight, 11 o'clock to midnight and there used to be a Hogmanay night on and the, the host, usually hosted by Andy Stewart. Do you remember that? Hogmanay! It's the Hogmanay night! I don't know what he used to say. What did he used to say? Let's find out. And here it is. That'll have had some of you swinging around. Hogmanay, Hogmanay, da, da 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 Now my sister, and I know you're watching sister, I don't know if you're watching now or whether you're catching up again later. My sister, at the ripe old age of, well she hasn't been doing it this year because we've all been in lockdown, but in France she plays the banjo and at the ripe old age of 75, 76, she's now older, because of lockdown she plays the banjo and she also does barn dances and she does these that kind of music not not so much hog money but she's going turn to the left and dance to the right and do 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 i'll have to get you to come on sister you'll have to video me and send me a video of you performing so that they can see what you do <laughs> so that was number 12 the scottish piper Now, back to the whodunit. Do you know who did it? My first thought is it's the Reverend because he was standing looking over the body. But was he? Could it be that Mrs... Could it be Miss Winters? Who's... Who said she, she was a saloon, Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? Let's find out. The very last sentence. I'll read the last sentence. Um... Who could do such a terrible thing, the Reverend saying that? This is Sherlock Holmes. Who could do such a terrible thing? You should know the answer to that, Reverend. Excuse my cynicism, but your pity is as false as your cassock. Though I must say I did admire your off-the-cuff performance just now, you must have nerves of steel. No, the truth is, you go from door to door in the guise of a priest, visiting elderly women to beg, borrow or steal whatever you can lay your hands on. The trust invoking priest garments works wonders, so it's never difficult to gain entry some way or other. This time something went wrong, whether you intended to murder the woman or if it suddenly seemed impudent to do, I cannot say. One thing is certain. The woman's cry of death came as you plunged the massive bowie knife you brought with you into her chest. But you had no time to flee because you were immediately surrounded by the worried neighbours. But you improvised quickly and cleverly with that little story about the nativity figures, especially the bit about having heard the cry and rushing into her flat only wanting to help. Yes, it's true, your attire certainly inspires trust. But there are other pitfalls, are there not? You said the woman was a member of your parish. This woman, with her Italian prayers, who even has a devotional corner for a Sicilian saint and her rosary, a deep, devout Catholic from Italy, 
why you, you claim to be a pastor who served the Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the Anglican Church. I'm afraid you went a bit overboard there. <laughs> that poor woman was obviously not a Protestant and a priest who had served the Archbishop would surely know that he is not styled the Venerable, but His Grace. You would use Venerable to address an Archdeacon. And by the way, the Bishop's Palace certainly isn't run by a prior. He would only head a priory. Well played and lost, I'm happy to say. Reverend. There you go. It was the Reverend, but you didn't know why he deduced it was the Reverend. Or did you? Maybe you did. I hope you enjoy that. I'm sure you all say you keep enjoying the, the, these um, these whodunits. I'm getting very close through it, mind. And that was actually number 13 because I've missed one out. And if I miss a week, if I happen to miss a night, then that's fine. I'm caught up. But if I don't, then I'm going to have to go back to that one. It might not be so good. So, there you go. That was Vlogmas Day 12. I'm going to love you and I'm going to leave you and I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye!